So I'm lifting my shed here. I need some clearance for a uh, car lift. And I see a lot of guys on the internet, uh, they've only got one door opening and the car lift is gonna be centered in their shed and they actually install the lift first between a couple of rafters so it has the clearance to be installed. And then they use the lift itself to lift their garage up. They build a, some sort of bracket system. Unfortunately, they don't show it very well. But that's not what I got going on here. You can see I got two doors and the lift is not going to be centered in the garage. It's going to be centered in one of these bays. So I can't use the lift to lift my garage, unfortunately. So um, I've got to use jacks to lift this thing up. And first of all, let me start off by saying this is super sketchy. You got to be willing to lose your garage to just start something like this. Uh, otherwise you're going to need to hire some professionals and do it the right way. This is the wrong way to do it, but it did work in my case. I've, uh, I'm done lifting it now. Uh, and I'm showing you at this point in the process, cause I've got, uh, things at various stages to show how I finished it off. First thing you want to do is borrow every bottle jack you can get your hands on. This one you can see isn't straight, but it's done lifting, and so it's kind of uh, went cattywampus on me here at the end. So this is a terrible example. You don't want to do that. The pressure's off of this one. That's why it's everything's kind of tilted, and I got the wedges out that were straightening this thing up while it was lifting. But basically, I come in here and I cut every post. Cut it mostly with a circular saw, and then I came in with an oscillating tool and a sawzall to finish these off. Obviously the problem with the sawzall is that thing's uh, going in and out, and you can hit your siding with it, so you got to be careful with that. And then I'm going to come in with the oscillating tool. I'll show you that tool here in a minute. Um, they actually work way better than what you'd think for cutting wood, but... I'll come in and I'll clean this stuff up with it. Let me show you that now. These are really inexpensive. You can get name brand ones even for like 50 bucks. And then that tool will reach in there and you would think it wouldn't cut worth a damn, but it cuts uh, really awesome actually. So after I, I cut these things, of course, I installed, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, a brace on each post that I could, uh, you know, it stays screwed into the bottom. And then as you lift, you've got to unattach all the screws at the top while you're jacking. And then when you're done jacking, you got to reset the jacks because the jacks are only going to go like six inches at a time. Then I screw into the top. And obviously the more the higher you go the sketchier things get you really got to worry about the wind that should be obvious to you you shouldn't really be trying this unless you've got some sort of experience with these types of things where you understand bracing and the way things need to be braced up like i couldn't just like this jack uh board here i wouldn't just want to attach it here at the bottom you got to get some bracing way up high too, so it's got some stability. This is the one I'm jacking off of here. Huh, that's what she said. So, you'll unattach all of them all the way around, all these braces all the way around as you're lifting. And then that jack is pushing on this. Now this whole building's 24 by 24, and it's completely empty inside. No, uh interior finishing and so forth my math shows that this thing weighs 4,000 pounds now I've added some weight obviously here for this bracing so might be 4,500 pounds as I'm lifting everything but I've had it split between uh, I think seven jacks was the total one two three four five six and then yeah seven here's where i've already finished and installed my bracing i guess 
you build like a header to install in there. And unfortunately these boards or this uh, lumber that I had to start with isn't perfectly dimensional. So it's been a little difficult to fit that sizing, but that's just a problem that I have that you may not have. So I'll install this in, of course, and then get a full length two by six in my case here to kind of tie everything together. And then wherever possible, you're gonna to wanna to brace this other side here too. Uh, I'm probably not gonna run these all the way up where I'm able to brace them, but ideally, you know, like on this one here, I could put a two by six on either side, at least if my header thingy uh, was fit a little better. Every one of my posts is a different different size, unfortunately, slightly different. So as I did my math to build these headers, well, this one was way off because this this original post is uh, was way undersized. Anyway, uh, ideally, you'd want to go a brace on this other side. And I'm going to come in with some patches at least to tie this in together a little better. I'm going to have some scrap at the end. And uh, we'll we'll tie that in a little better, but you at least want a full length post on one side at a minimum. And when I'm jacking this thing up, I'm only going a half inch at a time. I'll go to I'll go to one jack and lift it half an inch, and I'll go to the next one down the line and bring that up to half an inch. Of course, I'm measuring with my uh, my tape measure to make sure everyone is staying the same uh, the same distance. And so it takes a while. So you, you'll do your half inch, work your way around, and then go another half inch, work your way around until at least one of the, uh, until one of the jacks is at its max lift, and then you match that one. Come in, tie your post back in uh, with screws, and uh, start it over. Now on these, On these, I would take this jacking post and unattach that and, you know, lower the jack and, and drop this post back down, drop the post back down on the lower jack. But on some of these, like this one, I didn't have a board that I wanted to use here that was any longer and didn't want to reattach it. And so I had to build some cribbing uh, it's not perfectly cribbing there, but uh, had to had to to get the jack higher up in the air. If you go higher than that, you would have to do a traditional cribbing where you crisscross things. So that is a way to do it. Now, unfortunately, we had a really terrible storm after I had this thing lifted at uh, 25 inches. Had a real, you know, like 60, 70 mile an hour winds. There's a tornado in town even, and it did survive. It wasn't on the jacks overnight during the storm. Uh, all I had was these posts holding it up, and you can see all, some of them were just two by fours on one side, and uh, it did hold, hold up, luckily. I kind of expected it to, to see a, a mess in the morning after I woke up, because I knew it was storming. Obviously, you don't want to do this if there's storms coming and if you think this is only going to take you a day to do you're wrong you better figure on three or four if your brain says one day you better figure four days in a row of relatively light wind while you're doing it and definitely the lightest wind possible as you're actually lifting because none of those uh, uh, boards on the sides of the posts are attached while you're lifting it it's just every, the weight of the whole shed sitting on the jacks so, like I said, I like doing sketchy stuff. It works out most of the time. I don't suggest you do it. Professionals would have taken the siding off this whole thing. And, uh, you know, you'd have a team of guys, but I'm just one. And they would have added four feet to the top of these or put whole new posts in. That would be even better. Um, but most guys probably would have added four feet to the top of these posts and then reset the rafters on them. 
I'm just one guy, I can't do it that way. It takes a team. And uh, this was the only way I could do it. Because this is less than ideal having a split on whatever, one, uh, every one of your posts right in the middle. It takes a lot of strength out, but I'm planning on finishing this off. So by the time I build some walls in between this so I can lay OSB on the inside, that OSB is going to add a ton of strength to things. Uh, but if you don't understand that, you shouldn't be doing this. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just telling you that you've got to have some understanding of this stuff or this is over your head and you're going to kill yourself. So anyway, if you guys are into this stuff, it is possible. It can be done. I'm mostly just giving you this for entertainment purposes. You don't have my approval to do this. This is dangerous stuff. But the other thing, obviously, is before you get started, you got to disconnect all the electric that was in here. A lot of the wiring that I had in here was... Um, not up to snuff kind of patched in one wire at a time and some of it was didn't even have a ground in it so basically i left one wire that actually did have a ground for some lighting on the ceiling of course i still had to disconnect it and you're going to need some power you're going to need some power while you're working so i wired in one plug to use with extension cords because i don't have access to uh power in the house you don't have enough cords to run it out here so this is just kind of teetering on here and uh i've got this holding it straight up but anyway hope this was entertaining to you maybe you got some info out of it uh if you're going to tie into it which you shouldn't good luck thanks for watching